when he was planning to repose. I've just been talking to my therapist and she said, I shouldn't make any big life decisions right now. I don't really? need to do that. And you're so listening she, to she's this. She's saying this on a Monday. I'm planning on proposing on a Friday. I have to run three miles, chased by dogs. There's helicopters and there's this whole thing. Oh then you get God. captured and that's when you start having to go through, I don't want to say torture, but it kind of is. We actually didn't even plan to no. go public. There was a whole paparazzi episode about Whoa. finding out where you live and then following us. We were holding hands like right before like we got on the street. But wow. they caught us, wow. I guess. What is it like being engaged to someone that was on The Bachelorette? Did you watch the season? No, I still haven't seen it. I don't know, it's just like, <laughs> do I want to watch her making out with multiple guys? What's, What's up, up dudes? dudes? <laughs> and welcome back to the Unplanned Podcast. Today, Woo! we have some very special guests. Hannah Brown and Adam, thank you guys for coming on the show. Yes. We appreciate you being Thanks for here. Having us. Thanks. Yeah, they just got engaged pretty recently. Like that. I was looking at your ring. You thank did an amazing job. He that is really so great. Beautiful. Wow. That is yeah. a beautiful ring. He did really well. Did it? Mostly himself. I didn't know what he was going to to do. We went and looked at rings. Like we were in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, where I'm from. My brother had just gotten married, and they were they were picking up some type of wedding registry, something from the jeweler. And I was like. I was like looking at the rings. I was like, well, I haven't tried them. I was like, would you just want to try them on? And they're not like, there wasn't many to choose from, like maybe like four. Like, oh, yeah. And I was like, I just want to see like what even size I am or whatever. There was one that was a three stone. Okay. They didn't look like this exactly, but I never thought I would want that. But the way it looked on my finger, he was like, I think that looks really nice. And he must have really liked it because that's what he ended up getting me. Mm-hmm. Was it that really? same ring? That's awesome. No. Oh, no. you said Similar. Just, just the idea. Stone. Tell us about the proposal. First of all, did you even know what was going to happen? Like, were you surprised? Um, I, I hadn't thought about it, really. Just had a lot going on starting the podcast. We were also working on this other project. There was just a lot happening. And my anxiety was super heightened mm-hmm. in a way that hadn't been in a while. And was really trying to, like, just kind of keep that at bay, but was not doing the best. And I, like, had this, like, freak out conversation. I don't know what's wrong with me. Are you sure you want to be with me? Like this, which mind you, this happens like every every quarter, every quarter. Yeah. I have this <laughs> yeah. But you know, this was on this Monday of when he was planning to repose, and I was just like, "Yeah, I've just talk, been talking to my therapist, and she said I just I shouldn't make any big life decisions right now. Just <sighs> I don't need really? to do that." And you're so listening she, to she's this. saying this on a Monday. I'm planning on proposing on a Friday. Oh my god! In one gosh. of our favorite places, Bolt Farm Tree Houses in Whitwell, Tennessee. Yeah. So, wow. and he had told me we were. I didn't. I hadn't been putting two and two together because I was so in my own mm-hmm. stuff. Just thought we were going on a trip. Yeah. And meanwhile, he like can't sleep knowing that I've said all this stuff. And he was like, hey, I just like, I really want to talk about something. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is about last night. I was like, trust me, I feel so much better. And he's like, well, yeah, like it is. Um, you know, you said some things that, you know, you're like asking what is love and, you know, saying that your therapist doesn't think that you need to make any big decisions right now and I feel like it's only fair of me to let you know that I'm planning on proposing on Friday and I'm like wait (laughs) I I said no you're like my crisis was averted and now it's bad now there's another one and so then I have a panic attack that night so then I messaged my therapist literally like right after we're at dinner in all caps, I need counsel. Oh <laughs> Get me in. And I felt, you know, she was asking about how, how I was feeling. And I was like, it's not that I don't want to get engaged. I just am in this weird space. She's like, well, what if you just say that to him? And I'm like, well, I mean, I kind of did. And he then messages me and's like, okay, like I'm going to cancel it all. And I was like, oh, great. This is, I feel bad. But also like now, now I know it's going to happen. So like I can be like ready whenever we do something. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be this weekend. Had you guys talked about getting engaged at all? Or was that like the first time that it was mentioned? Then we talked about we it. We definitely talked sure. about it, you know, okay. half-heartedly and just, you know, just to get a sense of what she would like yeah but that's kind of when it put we put it into motion like actually you know thinking about it yeah um yeah we didn't we didn't talk extensively about it and this was after dating for how many years over two and a half yeah two and a half yeah Yeah. so then he ended up telling me that everything was not happening and i said we're we're gonna postpone things like Mm -hmm. i i want the surprise factor to be there because that's that's what engagement's all about it's like you, you want the reaction you want her to feel good about it and everything leading up into that point kind of took all the fun away from it. Mm. I did have family and friends like flying and driving in from all over the country. Um, 
so there was still a part of me that in the back of my head, I was like, yes, we're going to p- postpone things, but I still want to make it work somehow. So that was on Friday. We were supposed to leave. That's when everything was supposed to happen. Okay. And on Thursday, I just gone to therapy again. I went, I went back to back days. Okay. Um, <laughs> like, we're doubling up. This has been yeah, long. Doubling up. As he was plotting, he had, he had talked to our friends who owned the Bolt Farm tree houses. They had just had a baby like that week, the week before, and they were going to host like a little party. And they had this really beautiful barn where the, well, they'll have people come. And uh, so I, was, I didn't think anything of it. So I was like, okay, great. Like, let's go. I like literally put on like dirty clothes from the floor. And I walk in and I'm like, huh, this is like set up weird for a, a baby like celebration. And he had planned it in this beautiful barn wow. and got me there. And this is before your family was in town? This is before, because my family, we were gonna meet them. So this was like the gotcha. Thursday before, and I, before. and I was okay. so, and I was, I was totally shocked. So we ended up definitely salvaging it, but I also was like, really? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait, but you just had this whole crisis, and then were you kind of worried, like, did I just make the wrong decision? It wasn't that I made, thought I didn't make the wrong decision. The whole thing, like I said, it was never that, like I didn't want to get, married or get engaged it was more i'm in a weird spot right now it was still beautiful and great and i definitely was in the moment i'm glad there wasn't people around because i could like it was just us yeah looking back i would have done it differently for sure i'm glad everything worked out and she said yes she (laughs) she didn't freak out but um yeah they're just there was something in me that i was like i can still make this work and make her happy and bring the surprise factor back but in the like looking back really i i should have taken it more seriously you know her mental health and like where she was in terms of anxiety and her therapy and what her therapist said i think there was a lot of fear around also just getting engaged so it was like almost like ripping the band-aid off mm. type thing mm. for me i think anxiety in relationships has been always something that i've kind of struggled with um, like fear of sometimes just taking next steps and things after everything that I've gone through. Like for those who don't know, like I was the bachelorette, got engaged. Yeah. And yeah. like, I think that was actually like kind of just traumatic in a uh, sense. So I think the engagement and like everything just kind of triggered some things right. so that it happened was great and that we had it together. And then we had the weekend with our family and friends and we ha- we obviously had to tell them more of the story yeah and then i also think it's been cool to be able to share our story because a lot of times you just see like pictures and videos mm-hmm. of like this magical moment which we have mm-hmm. we have the pictures and the videos of a beautiful moment that looks perfect mm-hmm but there's this whole backstory that I don't think everybody hears. And there's a lot of women who feel the same way that I do when it comes to, and and men maybe feel in the same way as Adam of there being, even though it's something you want to do, there's this fear and it's maybe not always like this Mm. picture perfect moment. It's exciting to step into this new part of your life, a new chapter, but it's okay to also have other feelings of fear mm, totally. of that like it can be both it can For be sure. both yeah, yeah and as you were telling that story i was thinking that same thing yeah like you can see it all in just a picture but not know yeah. like it can be a lot of heavy things all at once yeah i realized too with you mentioning mentioning the bachelor i was like i don't think we ever did a proper intro so for those of you guys listening <laughs> hannah brown if you don't know hannah brown was the bachelorette she won dancing with the stars which is super impressive by the way <laughs> and, and then was just also on special forces so um i can't imagine like having so much of your life public and then doing the bachelorette you know dating all these people and then you have that engagement on the bachelorette and now this is going on so like i guess now that i'm putting the pieces of the puzzle together i'm like that makes sense why you would have so much stress yeah around this moment um i'm curious like how much of how much of being on that show was like real versus like television you know because i feel like you're aware of it being TV or, or were you I don't know I was such like so innocent going on the show I would say I I really thought that this is like a door that God was opening up for me and this is how it's gonna meet my person like you know people meet on we met on a dating app or meet you know all different types of ways so why not this, this is yeah, just the way yeah. that this is gonna happen for me as far as it being real 
I wouldn't say it's staged, but there's a lot, it's a, it's a TV show. So there's a lot mm-hmm. of production and play yeah. producers that, you know, are trying to make a good TV show okay. and you're cut off from the outside world. So you don't have your family, your friends to kind of do some pulse checking yes. in and just really asking like, what do you want? Like, is this where you, is this who you really want to be with? How are you feeling? Like you have that, but it's all in a store. It's Wait, you for can't, a story. You can't have that all. You can't like talk to your siblings no, and be like, what do you, you think about a- this person? Mm-hmm. Like you have a you producer do, to talk to. But it's to. on like TV and it's it's different. Oh, so if you are like able during, to talk to them, like they're going to record hometown. it. Yeah, no. That is so weird. So you don't you're you cut off from everyone, wow. and they also are hearing everybody else's you know yeah little story. So it's like, ooh, okay, this person's feeling this way, and this person's feeling this way. So let's make this happen. Yeah, they can. Do, they have like influence. They have influence. Yeah. So I, I, I don't ever like to say it's not real because it is real, but there's a lot of forces at play mm-hmm. that are just not um, don't usually the same as real, real life. life. Okay. Yeah. So the producer, are they trying to basically be your friend and then influence decisions that 1, you make? 1,000%. And I, I, yeah. don't, I, I always try to be careful. Like It's not that I don't think that producers didn't care about me at all, but they also have to... It's their job to make good TV. To make good TV. Yeah. So when I first went on, I was like, "Oh, I don't think my person's here. That's so scary." Now I'm the Bachelorette, and I have to do like I don't remember eight, nine something weeks of this. And then you're at the end of it, and it's like I'm supposed to get engaged, kind of like knowing you're going to get engaged, but like, is it going to happen? Like, I think mm. all those feelings kind of came up again. Mm. But in that moment, being like, "Am I making the right decision?" I don't know. I think everybody's telling me I'm making the right decision. I'm yeah. still not sure because I just broke up with a guy two days ago and I have to break up with a guy today and get That's engaged so today. That's really weird. So yeah. it's just a lot of emotions and conversations and things at play that are just not normal. And I think it can be triggering when you're put in similar situations without all those other outside things happening, but you, you feel that again. And I think that kind of happened for me. Yeah. Like that, like influenced your engagement. This episode is sponsored by rocket money. It seems like there's literally subscriptions for every single thing. Isn't it annoying? Everything is a monthly service. It's like sign up for our, our subscription. It's like I don't want to do that, and then I forget about it every single time. There's literally a bacon of the month club. What? <laughs> a bacon you. of the month club? If you think of it, someone already has thought of it and made it a monthly subscription. But luckily, Rocket Money helps you cancel your subscriptions so that you don't forget about them, and they just keep going and going and spending all your money. Exactly. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions monitors your spending and helps lower your bills all in one place i feel like with the coming of the new year people usually have a resolution that is along the lines of budgeting and rocket money is a great tool for that with over 5 million uses and counting rocket money has helped save its customers an average of 720 dollars a year wow and 1 billion dollars in total savings whoa so far. that's a lot of money that's insane a billion can you even say that that's crazy for its well, customers can we just give it up for rocket money right now yes Stop wasting your money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash unplanned. That's rocketmoney.com slash unplanned. Rocketmoney.com slash unplanned. Back to the episode. What is it like being engaged to someone that was in the public eye in that exact way, like on The Bachelorette? Yeah, it's been it's been a journey for sure. I also, mean, did being, you watch the season? Yeah, did, no, were you watching I all still this? haven't seen it. Okay. And I, I don't think I would watch her season. Uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe at some point. I don't know. It's just like, <laughs> do I want to watch, you know, every episode her making out with multiple guys? Yeah. It's also, kinda, did you watch weird. it back or is that like... I watched it when it was happening. Oh, okay. I mean, I was there and then I watched it when it aired. I want to watch her on The Bachelor. I want to see yeah. her oh, okay. on oh. Colton season. I mean, it's not... She doesn't have a whole lot of airtime, but yeah. I think that would be more fun than watching her as a Bachelorette. Yeah. I think there's... So you haven't seen either? N- no. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I've seen clips and, you know, I get tagged and stuff every now and then. Um, but that's just seen, like on YouTube or yeah, TikTok. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, yeah, I've yeah. seen yeah. most of her Dancing with the Stars dances and I watched all of Special Forces. Um, so I, I mean, I'll go back to the Bachelor days at some point. Does that make you uncomfortable having so much of that time of your life, like public, just completely out there and you can't really control that, you the know? The dating stuff, yeah, yeah, I think so. Because I think there's a, a warped view of of me in in dating and in love because like maybe I responded 
and reacted in ways that I maybe wouldn't have if it wasn't that it was a TV show. Uh, okay. Not that I knew it was a TV show. It's just my friends weren't there to be like, what are you doing? Or mm. couldn't And editing call. does a yeah, lot, I feel and like. And editing for sure. So I think sometimes I can get a little self-conscious about it, being like, oh, wait, why do people like me? Or why are people still interested? Is it a piece of who I still am? Or is it a piece that's like long gone or a piece mm. that just like happened and this editing that kind of made me look this way, I think that can be what's hard for me. Mm. Do you feel That's like people hard. got an accurate representation of who you are as a person on The Bachelor and on The Bachelorette? I think I was definitely like authentic for everything that was at play at that time, but I don't think a lot of the things and the ways that I reacted, responded, had conversations, or anything that would actually happen mm. mm-hmm. in real life. And I think I got an accurate representation of me at that stage of my life. I was 24. Um, I was the youngest bachelorette. Wow. So like, and just my life before, I was very sheltered, lived in a small town, Alabama, never left. I went to school. We know a lot about sheltered. Yes. That's us. That is us. And then I went off into LA and Mm -hmm. had this, and I felt like I kind of found, I thought I like found myself and was like, actually had a world opened up to me, which I think was amazing and I'm so thankful but that was the first time that had like opened up for me and so that was all like captured on camera too mm-hmm. and it's like if you could go back and and do it all over again would you would you have gone on the bachelorette would you change the past or do you feel like because of the life that you lived it's made you who you are today no I'm I'm like I wouldn't have not gone on those shows I think yeah. there's been a lot of benefit not just not just career-wise but like obviously but um, like I said, it opened my world up in such an amazing way in a, in a lot of instances and circumstances. And it also was the first time that like anybody really asked me about how I felt was from a producer on a TV show. Like I, I'd never had anybody like ask me how a certain thing made me feel. Mm-hmm. Producers are there to like, you know, be your friend and, okay. and, and help you in some way, kind of understand what you're feeling. Cause there's only so much you can see a person like make a, a face or you know if somebody's being asked you know on a date and you really like that person you can see somebody just be like eh, you know happy for the person but having someone then sit you down and interview and like how did you really feel and it's like how did I feel I feel really disappointed because it reminded me of this that maybe like I'm not always picked I sometimes feel like I'm not always chosen mm. Whoa. and it's it's making you think that way for the first I never like thought like Oh, you know, I would be like, you know, I I was disappointed, but everybody gets disappointed. And it's like, no, but like, why did that make you feel disappointed? And I'm like, because I didn't get picked. And it's like, have you ever felt like you weren't chosen before? And it's like, wow, Mm. that's maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe Maybe there's more to this. Yes. (laughs) That was the first time I'd had any type of conversation like that in my life. And those are my favorite conversations to have. And I think where you learn the most about yourself and others. Um, And it was really from that show and I came back home and my mom was like wow like I changed so much and like really was more of an insightful individual yeah. from it yeah it, it almost sounds like it's a therapy cell sh- session that they're recording like when they, when they interview you like I've never thought about it that way but hearing all those different storylines that they pull from in the tv show it makes sense now how they do it because they they really go deep and get you to open up so I'm, I'm sure that was probably like nice for you to do that it was mm-hmm. helpful to like talk out all of those feelings and, and express that but then to have that shared on national television must be must be weird to to be so so vulnerable and then it's just all out there totally but then in that same breath i think because i learned how to have those conversations and be so vulnerable yes it was weird watching people uh-huh. see that but i don't think we would have met if it wasn't or, or connected if i hadn't learned how to have those types of conversations because yeah. he's seven years older than me and also had gone through his own like you know growth and change and journey with himself and and understanding mm-hmm. more of what he believes and who he is and so i think because we have both kind of understood the importance of having those vulnerable insightful conversations to create connection is how we were able to connect mm-hmm. and in a way with that if, if that hadn't happened i would have not known how to really show up authentically as myself yeah and we're on how you guys met you said you'd met on a dating app Mm -hmm. and you being a public figure did did you recognize her how did that work she had a very familiar face but i had no idea who she was okay um but i i googled her like 
45 minutes before our first date and saw a bunch of YouTube videos of her doing, she was basically doing a series on her getting back into the dating life after The mm. Bachelorette. The videos almost scared me off. I mean, they were, they were oh my God. her going into the bathroom and being like, oh my gosh, this guy, this is not my guy. Uh, <laughs> it, the food's good, but uh, I'm going to go back in and see what happens. Oh, yeah. shoot. Stuff like that. It, Did you make um, a video like that on your first date? I didn't make it because... <laughs> I, would, I had my eye on her phone the entire time. When she went to the bathroom, I was like, let's, let's, let's leave that phone there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my I gosh. Wanted, I, I had, like, thought about it, but honestly, as soon as I met him, I had also had a long day of other videos. So I was oh, like, really? I'm tired. No. I, but, I, I was your second date of the day, right? No, no, no. Uh, uh, no, no. <laughs> you're like, well, oh, you, were doing, you were pulling two a days. I was pulling two you're, a days. You were speed dating. You were yeah. trying to meet yeah. all these wow. different guys. It was fun. Wow. I was loving dating at this so point because I had just taken the pressure off of it. And I was like, I'm yeah. just going to go back out there and either know me. If they know me, they know me. If they don't, they don't. I really don't care. I'm just going to try to just like show up authentically. Yeah. And we met. Um, at this little Mexican restaurant that was right in the neighborhood. I like biked there and I just had a, a, you know, you know, YouTube malfunctions. My camera was um, overheating and dying and I was just stressed. I was trying to do like a, another type of video and I was just irritated at the day and we had talked and he had planned this date and I was like, can we move it up? Um, I need a drink. <laughs> oh my gosh. And he was like, yeah sure but how about this time and i ended up still being late and i <laughs> i rode my bike over there like no makeup on like i just it was a really like i was being myself just a, mm -hmm. a mess and i remember i got there and i kind of saw him from the side and i was like oh shoot he's really cute and i had like a beanie on my head it was around this time of year and i was like okay trying to like get myself ready and i came in just like so flustered and he's so calm and just has more of like a calming mm -hmm. energy and I think he was just amused by my frazzledness and I think I pretty quickly was like okay I don't know if I'm gonna record this one because I kind of like him <laughs> like I knew when you like, were recording the date or just like you're I would go in and like when I would start a video like just you know my phone be like okay i'm going on a date meeting this guy at this restaurant he seems really cool but we'll see how it's gonna go and then i would go we would have the date and then i would like, have to go to the bathroom and then i'd be like okay so here's all that happened oh but my i knew God. Like, and like during the dinner a film crew would come and like no i would just yeah, vlog yeah. The, the date okay be honest though like were you going on extra dates because you're like this is kind of a fun series like i no, I like, like I, I was kind of mad i met him because i was like this is fun like this was a really fun good content yeah and and she still tried to keep doing it i mean i don't know if you're no i just wanted to like, date more you're like i still want to <laughs> date but i think in the back of your mind you're kind of like i want to date more so that i can continue my I, youtube series, series. totally totally series. i feel it was like this a, must be in a really really entertaining to watch it was a really good series and i wanted to keep dating more people yeah, i mean think about the, her followers they were they eating loved it, it. Up. <laughs> All the girls rooting you on. Oh yeah, they're God. like, oh my God. Him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but then I met him and I'm like, shoot, well, like, I don't need to, like, put out a video about him because then he'll, if I want it, because I, I was like, I kind of want to go on another date with him. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. The gift giving season is upon us. It is upon us. I feel like it's kind of stressful. I'm really thankful, though, because I feel bad. like we are bad. <laughs> But whether or not your family gives gifts during the holidays, you get to define how to give to yourself and the holidays are a great time to do that. So whether it's by starting therapy, going easier on yourself during the tough moments, or treating yourself to a day of complete rest, remember to give yourself some love this holiday season. I think people ignore themselves over the holidays, especially moms and people that end up hosting and have to deal with all of the stress of everything. So if that's you, maybe you need to go to BetterHelp because they have licensed therapists that you can freely switch whenever you want. If one's not working for you you can switch to somebody else and it's just a great way to do therapy from the comfort of your own home it's a really convenient way to sign up when there's like so much hectic craziness going on during this time of the year um, you just go online do a personal survey and then you're set up with a licensed therapist it's completely online so you don't have to go somewhere so it's great because it'll help you learn positive coping skills and how to set boundaries which um is very very important during the holidays so in the season of giving give yourself a little of what you need with better help visit betterhelp.com slash unplanned podcast today to get 10 percent off your first month that's help h-e-l-p dot com slash unplanned podcast back to the episode so you just messed it all up in any way Sorry. i never made Not another video series. after how did yeah. so 
you know, Hannah being a TV internet personality, how did that make you feel going into this dating thing? Did you guys decide, okay, we're not gonna show our relationship on social media for X amount of months? Like, how did you navigate all that? Did that, did that make you uncomfortable? I would be lying if I said I wasn't intimidated. I, at first I was definitely intimidated. I didn't know anything about that world. And honestly, like she kind of coached me through it. So like we would get, we would ride bikes together and I would, we would, you know, be leaving each other and I would go to give her a kiss on the cheek or something. And she'd be like, no, no, no. She'd be like, not, not here, not here. Just because like being on the, I remember that distinctly being on the and Santa Monica upset. boardwalk. Yeah. Um, she was like, no, I'm not, not doing that here because someone was probably watching and going to take a picture of that. And then if it got out, we just weren't at, at the stage in our relationship yet to handle a lot of scrutiny or wow. just eyeballs. Yeah. And I think it was hard at first. I remember like I would share on social media, but I would never show him like we, I would be doing something. We would be doing something together, but I would just show me and I could tell you were a little like, well, just because I had never experienced it before, like, like mm -hmm. I, I'm very. I was like, if I think something, I'm gonna say it. If I want to do something, I just like, I just do it. And yeah. you know, thinking through actions and words to that extent, I just hadn't experienced mm -hmm. before. Yeah, and but I think you started to understand why. But it took. Yeah. It was. It was weird at first when you're dating somebody. And like, why don't you want to share me? Or why are you being yeah. weird in front of other people? Because in a lot of circumstances, that could be like a red flag. One yeah. thousand percent. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I also tried to like tell him pretty upfront. Like, trust me. Like, it's very hard when you're like starting a new relationship or like in a relationship to have a lot of people like chime in mm. just mm -hmm. personally because then I'm going to be like oh what are they saying I don't want to be with him or whatever and I didn't want that to be anything that m swayed my decisions because I already had anxiety in relationships of just like who do I want to be with do I want to be like actually dating someone I just wanted to date around you know so I didn't need anybody else to question or look into things like because it's it's weird because like someone could get a hold of a 13 second clip of us not like being super lovey dovey and like putting a lot of attention on each other yeah. and be like, you guys aren't right for each other. They're not right for each other. <laughs> you need to be with someone that right. you left in the past. And like, we, I'd be lying if that said that didn't affect us, especially during the okay. beginning. It affected you probably It affected me, me for so, sure. So did I was you like, wait we don't have to be done. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have to touch me right now? Like, you know, yeah. like I think he wanted to make sure people knew that we liked each other yeah and i'm like we don't have to and i get it i'm like but we don't like we don't always have to act like we're this couple that has we're just like totally obsessed with each other and like we are but it's okay people are gonna say that things about us regardless yeah. they're gonna say you're either too clingy or they don't have any connection or um they're perfect for each other or they're totally wrong like that's always there's yeah. always gonna happen be those different types of opinions out there but it's hard on that level for sure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so then how long did you wait to go public with your relationship we actually didn't even plan to no. go public we went we were walking on um abbot kinney like on a rainy it's abbot kinney's like in venice venice santa monica area it's okay. a pretty like public place but i don't even think we normally held hands we, I, I remember now, we had parked at the end of the street and we were holding hands like right before like we got on the street, but somebody must have um, like a paparazzi, which it's not that I always have paparazzi, but I guess when it comes to like dating and stuff, um, had followed us and saw that we were holding hands right That's before bizarre. we got Whoa. on Abbot Kinney. But there, like, there was a whole paparazzi episode about like them staking it out and like Whoa. finding out where you live and then following us. From yeah, me picking because we from we apartment. weren't being like when we got on the like regular like pretty open. There's lots of of people on Abbot Kinney. Like we weren't holding hands. We were just like chilling, laughing. But wow. they caught it caught us wow. i guess before that's great yeah we have so many problems with the paparazzi oh yeah <laughs> they just come it's after just so, us so annoying no, no, yeah. i mean we don't they'll be like random things yeah but um yeah so that kind of 
That's weird, though, to just, is like, be yet? out in public and someone snaps a photo of you. Like, yeah. we've, I've, we've never had that, but it is weird. Like, I'm sure you probably had a, a fan that was maybe taking a video of you in public. Like, 1, we've had so that weird. happen in, like, Disney. And we, I just, no. every time I see people, I just, like, wave at Dude, them. Dude, I was in the <laughs> awkward stage of pregnancy, and it was the first time, like, I was in a bikini. And people oh. weren't taking pictures. Oh, like, it's the worst. Literally four feet from me. I was like, maybe not. That's annoying. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. So were you... That's so, kind of bizarre, like that, like they, they like, kind of took your story and yeah, made it so public we when you weren't necessarily trying to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we didn't really decide when, but it had been a, a good amount of time, I feel like. Mm. But then we just kind of slowly started showing our relationship and it was also a COVID relationship. So it started mm. pretty, Oh, okay. you know, we could only do so much. Like mm-hmm. I remember that was like a big day we got to go out, you know? Yeah. 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 So a lot of our relationship was at each other's place or like even on the beach was kind of weird back then in state of market like you couldn't always just be outside it was very weird so we got close really quickly i want to ask you what was it like telling your family like you might have seen her before (laughs) this girl that i'm bringing home like you might know a lot about her did they have any kind of reaction to that I don't think so. I, th- I just, I think People my knew. mom and dad thought it was cool. Um, <laughs> Did they warn you at all? Like, be careful with this bachelorette girl. Not at all. They're just not, <laughs> I don't know. They, we don't really have those kind of conversations anyway, but it was, okay. it was more just like, cool. Can't wait to meet her. Yeah. Okay, um, and then my brother I, who I lived with, my younger brother, um, we lived together in Venice. He was down from the, from the get go. I mean, he was like, she seems cool and can't wait to meet her. Like all that kind of stuff. So Elise was a fan of the show. Yeah. My sister-in-law um, definitely knew who she was and was, super excited about it other than that my family doesn't get like overly excited about anything just chill so they were just like cool can't wait to meet her bring her for thanksgiving or christmas i mean love that but it'll be funny now like his dad will will keep up with things and be like i saw you did so my my dad my dad is like number one fan yeah that's so funny yeah Yeah. so now they're they're more into it for sure you must be pretty good at dancing since you like literally won dancing with the stars you have a dance background i'm I'm assuming i danced when i was younger yes growing up but i feel like it's so weird i have like a complex with dance which i feel like a lot of people do um even though i won i still sometimes don't think i can dance i i know it's weird but yeah like i i can i have rhythm sometimes but i (laughs) also can be like super stiff yeah Yeah. i guess i can dance was that show so nerve-wracking because i think that we both have like backgrounds in dance from yeah from tiktok you know yeah no from like being kids in dance class and doing theater and stuff yeah i would be so stressed thinking about learning something on you learn on a monday and perform it on a no you you perform on a monday you start learning you would start learning on like the tuesday that's Whoa. We perform on the Monday. And sometimes And then it's usually dances. sometimes two, three dances. Wow. And you have the huge live audience, which would almost be more stressful to me than the fact that, because you can kind of separate, like, it's the just TV, a camera, even yeah. though it is being broadcasted to so many people. But, like, that's so... It was crazy. Were you stressed was, out? I was so... <gasps> I was so stressed out. And I think after everything, I, um, in a year, I was on Bachelor, Bachelorette. Right. Dancing with the Stars. So like I was on like 30 something wow. Mondays of, of the year on okay. ABC. And so it was right after Bachel- Bachelorette and it had not gone right. And I was like, I have to win. And I just, that's all I did. I just went to my like little apartment that had like nothing in it in LA and danced. And then would dance for like eight hours a day. And talk about nerves. Like we went and saw Matt James dance. And yeah. before like seeing them on the side of the stage about to walk out, like my heart was going like this. Yeah. Yeah. It's so I can crazy. only imagine it, what you went through every single there's night. There's like these little Whoa. clicks that started. It's like because it's the cl- the mm. the crowd's so loud and that's like what well, lets oh, you know. the click track in your in it, your ear. No, but they'll have it but you can barely hear it. But that's how it, that's to let the dancers know, okay, it's about to start because it's so loud in there. Oh my god! Oh my god. Sometimes like you can barely hear the click, yeah. so you don't know which click you're on. So you're like, okay, I just got to be ready. Oh my god! And yeah, there's no, yeah, you know, there's no doing it over. And like anything. you see, the, you see the dancers, and each of them kind of prep differently. But some some are like super frantic, can't stop walking. That's some are me. just like stone cold, just like breathing, almost like closing their eyes. 
Like people handle it differently, but you can feel the nervous energy. Today's episode is sponsored by SeatGeek. We have recently become sports fans. Yes, we like going to Suns games now. Yes, and we've been looking to find the best deal on Suns tickets. Yes. And oftentimes we find ourselves scrolling through SeatGeek because they just make it so user friendly. Yeah. They have tickets for every event you could probably think of. We've looked at tickets for musicals on there. We've looked at tickets yeah. for sporting events, for like any kind of sporting events. Wait, Coyotes, you actually bought Suns, our tickets. Cardinals. The, the musical that we went to last year, I think you bought those bought on, on SeatGeek. Geek. And what's really nice about SeatGeek is if there's a good deal on a ticket, it will light up green and you can see, ah, these seats right here, this is a steal. And on the flip side, if it's not a good deal, it will let you know the technology is amazing and it's red. So you're like, ah, I probably should avoid buying that ticket because it is not a good deal. It's just so clear. They even have yellow if it's like, ah, it's a decent yeah. deal like for this seat because um, it put, takes all those things into consideration. It's the number one rated ticketing app and they have more than 70,000 events on their app, wow. including concerts, sports festivals, wow. all that stuff. And um, here's the other thing. They are backed with their buyer guarantee and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. That's really nice. Because, you know, plans change and sometimes oh, yeah. you're locked in with these crazy non-refundable ticket prices. And you know, we came through for you guys. Use our code UNPLANNED for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code UNPLANNED. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Now back to the episode. But it was, I mean, it's such a cool experience. I'm so glad I got to do oh, it. Oh yeah. I would love, I was not, like I said, a lot was happening in that year. Um, that was before I knew how to cope with big feelings. So that's why I think I just really went into like, I have to win, I have to do mm-hmm. this, which I did, but I don't think I got to fully enjoy the experience the way that I would have loved to just like, it's such a cool show, yeah. but when you're so scared and tense and just want to win because you think that's the only thing that uh-huh. matters, there's a part of it that you can't fully enjoy. So yeah. I would change that or I'd love to go back and, and be able to do that again, but it was really fun. Yeah, really your, cool your determination is something that stands out to me. Yeah. Like you saying, like, I have to win. I have to do that. And I mm-hmm. feel like that carries on to you being in the special forces as yeah. well. Like, that's crazy. Your mental... Well, she won, the, you won yeah. special forces, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, I, I do really well in, which is not like real life. So a lot of these things that I've gotten to do are reality TV because they are real. Everything's real. But it's not real life, these experiences that you go through where you, you don't yeah, have a yeah. phone, you're cut off from all other responsibilities. Yeah. I do great in anything where it's like you have one focus and you do this uh, thing. Okay. And I'm like, I can do this. It's really easy for me to, I hate the word, it's, dissoci- it's totally dissociation. I can dissociate from everything else except for the one thing. Yeah. And I think that's what has helped me probably now looking back at all my you know trauma from the middle of some type of trauma i think that's my coping mechanism is to just be able to focus on one thing and do that very well and in these shows and experiences i was able to do that so i think that that's part of it but i do think there's a resilience of in every single one of those situations i had some pretty low lows and being able to be like all right well this is what we're doing right now Mm -hmm. and we're going to figure out a way to get back up. And Mm -hmm. so I think there's a resilience there that I'm, I'm trying to remind myself that it's not just the, Oh, I can dissociate. It's like, no, you have resilience and that's how Mm -hmm. you've been able to, to get through some of these really intense experiences. Didn't you get interrogated for 12 hours straight on the show? Yeah. It was like 10, 12 hours. I don't really know how long, that was pretty tough because it's not like fully in the interrogation part of the special forces. It's like the very end of the show was 10 days and the last di- last day they keep you like fully sleep deprived and you have to learn this like whole mission you have to do. And it's like fully, we were out in the um, Jordanian desert, like have to run three miles through the desert while you're being like chased by dogs and there's helicopters and there's whole thing. Oh then you gosh. get captured. They capture you? You haven't slept for a day. Um, you get captured and that's when you start having to go through the interrogation plus like, um, what is it called? I don't want to say torture, but it kind of is where you stay in like stress positions and you have to listen to like really horrible like sounds for 
10 to 12 hours while you're being oh interrogated and stuff. What are, what are these sounds? Yeah, like, is one, it like a baby's frequent? like crying, no. like colic. No. Um, but cool. Me literally crying. Thank mothers you. screaming. No. Like, or I say mothers. I think that's what I like. But like a woman, a woman like screaming bloody murder. No, I. Um, metal scraping together. Oh my gosh. That like um, sound, like that really horrible dial tone sound. And then like a pig. It was like a pig eating it sounded like it was really horrible oh for, my god while you're standing with like your hands up for an hour straight and then they would put you down on the ground with like your legs flex so like this is tight like laying down or crisscross that's hor- wow. that's literally horrible i would be, and you have you, you can't see because you have a mask and oh my a gosh. thing on so i would just be like and you're so tired so like you're falling asleep and like waking up and i would just be crying and the and just be like this will be over soon this has to be over soon but it was really tough and are these and then real be, challenges that special forces are yeah put through? they had to do it for 24 hours oh gosh so it's everything we did gave me like a big appre- appreciation for people that are like in our special forces but we did only a s- small amount of what they have to do wow but it was the hardest thing i've ever done for sure which challenge wow. was the scariest or most difficult? That was all? the most difficult that for was. me. Um, it's interesting. Everybody says things differently. Like the interrogation for a lot of people is hard when they have to like remember the story that we learned, like, you know, the day before about why we're getting captured and how to, cause it's all a simulation of like what would happen if you got captured by the enemy Yeah. and these type of things would happen to you. Like that part, I was able to handle myself pretty well. I have a pretty good memory so i rem- i knew what i needed to say and kind of kept really in control but it was those sounds that really bothered me Ooh. the most mm. actually um it just like got in my head a lot and i was yeah. so tired and then you have to like keep your hands above your head and you, i just felt like i was going crazy yeah. right that was the hardest for me for sure was there ever a moment that you felt like you were going to die um i kept telling myself this is being ca- their cameras there are cameras somewhere, even though I can't see them. <laughs> I can't die. I can't. They're not going to let me die on TV. Oh That's what God. I kept telling myself. <laughs> no. I was oh. like, because I thought I could. So I'm like, Hannah, they're not going to let you die on TV. They're not going to let you die on TV. <laughs> That's what I just t- kept telling myself. Wow. <laughs> so I couldn't think that I was going to die. There were times where I'm like, my body feels like it's about to break. And I don't want to do this anymore. But. I'm super yeah. impressed by that because I feel like people can see, oh, like the bachelor, the bachelorette, like they don't have to work hard. They're not like determined. Well, and you're They're also a pageant girl too, yeah. which comes with its own stereotype. Like, I feel like people just assume, oh, that's not that hard. But it's like, it's clear that that's not true based off of like you won it. Yeah. <laughs> you won special forces. Like you, you had the stamina and, de- and determination to go through something that literally special forces people are put through. So, you know what I think? It, I think it's, it's definitely the mental stuff. Like physically, I think it's also knowing you weren't, I knew I wasn't the best there. Like okay. off my performance, like going in where a lot of these are like Olympic gold medalists, athletes, professional athletes. And I think they're used to being the best and know what uh, they're doing okay. in their certain thing. Yeah. Where for me. Like the top in their area. Yes. I've always been judged by other people on things that you really can't control um and never i guess had that feeling of like i I went in knowing like oh i don't have the all the the things that you think are going to make the best in here so i think i came in with like a humility about me Mm. of like i know that that i am not the person that has all the like qualities on paper that you're like oh can do this Mm -hmm. but i've been in this type of situation before and so i'm just gonna like just keep going and i just the only way they kick you off is if you quit so you just don't quit yeah so you can't quit even when you're the worst and i think sometimes it's like when people would start failing because you would fail parts of the course different tasks like people failed and you could still you would still say but stay but i think people who were in that experience when they failed and would get like beaten up they had an experience that maybe in that type of way or hadn't in a long time and then with the mental exhaustion that you just have from the environment that you're living in it can just be like too much yeah i don't know i just 
I was able to just feel like, I guess this is my life now. Yeah. I don't, I'm not going to remember that I could like go be in a nice bed right now. Like this is how I live. This is, this will be the thing. And that. When did that me. all get filmed? Last June of 2022. Yeah. And you guys weren't in contact, able to contact no. you then? Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. Was that hard for you to watch the show and see Hannah going through all these really challenging no. things? No, it wasn't. Because no. we knew that I I Ah, uh, you knew I that did. she won. Yeah. I knew she won, but also, I just, I don't know. I, he thought it was so cool. I just know how won. tough she is, so I, yeah. I wasn't worried about her, like, mm-hmm. durability or anything. Yeah. Um, if anything, I was like, you know, I kind of knew that she was going to do well. Maybe you and Hannah, Abby, should do a Spartan race because have you done Spartan race before? No, have you? Abby done it? loves those. They're so fun. She's like this woman does like CrossFit. She's so Abby's jacked, by the way. I don't know if you probably. Oh my gosh! Why did I say Abby's that? very jacked. Do you do so CrossFit? I, I used to. I don't I, do. I literally don't even do it right now. But no. like, I don't know. I I feel like I see a similarity there. Like you guys could That'd totally do some sort well, of CrossFit. I did start doing CrossFit after the show, and because I was like, this has shown me that I am capable to, capable of doing more than I thought I yeah. could but also like there were some strength things that like I just didn't yeah. know how to do like we had to climb a rope but I didn't know how to climb a rope you kind of have to know how Crossing to do will that. Teach you that they teach and you and that was one of the first things I was like I have to learn how to cr- climb the rope and I can I can climb the rope now push-ups I can do like pull-ups I can do like one I'm still like working on that but um that's why I wanted to do it but that's still a whole different beast in itself. <laughs> like I'm still 1000% the worst person at our CrossFit gym. Hey, real quick, we wanted to let you guys know our new merch is here and it's not just new, it's our first ever podcast merch. It says, what's up dudes? We almost got rid of what's up dudes and you guys wanted us to keep it. To honor that, we made merch. The people that didn't want us to keep it are like, no. <laughs> like, why are you wearing that? But the people that did, this is for you. This is for you. <laughs> this is for you. I'm so excited to see you guys out in public wearing this. We'll have to get a picture. What are you, are you about to spit your coffee out? What's going on? I just got an intrusive thought so bad. I wanted to just do a spit take. What? And be like, merch. But I can't because that would get coffee everywhere. Yeah, you get coffee on I'm our on camera. I'm on hinge today. You are on hinge I'm, today. I'm rather sleep deprived, but I'm sorry. Is that what it, you need to go take Please a nap. Please talk about this merch again. Basically, all I wanted to say is if we see you guys in public wearing the merch, we totally need to get a picture. If we see you out and about, we would love to get a photo with we you. We would be jolly about that. Yes. Wearing and your you know who else would hoodie. be jolly? Anyone wearing this hoodie because it's so no, stinking who, comfortable. You know jolly is my parents. Whenever people say hi to us, like when my parents are there, they're so proud. They're always like, let me take a picture. Yeah, my parents are so sweet. They are so proud. Yeah, they're I love the best. That. Thanks for buying this hoodie. Yep. And you're welcome for the discount. Yeah, you can use code <laughs> dude. You can use code dude10 at checkout for 10% off of our What's Up Dudes merch. Just go to unplayedpodcast.com to buy it. Link in description. Now, back to the episode. So we we've, we've talked a lot about, you know, TV shows literally getting interrogated for 12 hours. That's insane. I can't I still can't believe you did that. But I'm so curious, since you guys are, are going to get married. Yeah, have you th- started wedding planning? Yeah. <laughs> wedding planning. Have you guys talked about how many kids you want? Have <laughs> you had those conversations? Because, like, there's a lot of conversations to have. There's a lot of things that you need to be aligned on. Mm-hmm. And what's scary is, like, I don't think it's physically possible to talk about everything that you need to talk about, right? Because, like, people change. We were just talking about that on our podcast the other day. But, like, how, what have you guys discussed before marriage that you're – making sure you're on the same page on as far as like kids and all that um i mean first of all when it comes to wedding planning no we have not done that it's just (laughs) been a very um busy season for us i mean wedding planning wise we just need to figure out where we want to do it Mm, i mean that's the first step we're we're like either destination wedding or do it you know somewhere kind of close to home but as far as talking about a future like future i mean i've always wanted to have kids i feel like i yeah. was i was born to be a dad um she knows that i think you know with you you're kind of you think about the changes that might happen once kids come. yeah so i think I, it, yeah go ahead no I, I just think there's a little bit of uncertainty and anxiety there bringing other you know life forms into the world yeah and whereas i'm like you know a couple of years away, I think um, we still need to figure out, you know, where you are and where we we both can meet. It's not. I definitely think at some point I want to have kids. I think it's very important for me because there is an age difference. That's it's very clear. That's not something I'm I'm like fully ready for just yet. There's a yeah. lot that I still want to do. 
Um, and it's not that I don't think kids allow you to still be able to do those things, but it changes yeah. your focus. Totally. I think that there's a way that it can, it can work, but I know me, I know mm. myself. And I think that's, um, something that I have to, it's very important that we've had these conversations of like, I know myself and I know that I still have some things that I need to work on before I feel really comfortable taking that role as mom because I know I'll take yeah. it very seriously and so we I feel like he would have a, a child tomorrow no, I but I feel but like sooner than sooner, sooner than you but would. I yeah. feel like it's been very clear on my side and he's been able to, to understand that that is not something that I'm wanting in the next foreseeable future I really would like to get married and then have some time to still just be us before that like happens really yeah right up right away that's very fair yeah is there a timeline you guys have talked about or is there like a number of kids that you think you might have sometime in the future look i think what's really hard for women is there is this ticking clock and i'm 29 and i Mm. already have some some stuff that you know we'll have to pay attention to like if we want to have babies, like what we're going to do for that. So I think that is kind of putting this time, this time on, on that I'm really resisting. Um, that's hard, but it's something that we've talked about and I don't look, we're not married yet and I don't want to have kids before we are married. So I think we just have to get married first and then we'll start figuring out what we need to do as far as making sure that that's possible for us. Um, I try, I can get really, like I've said, like I can start worrying and questioning things really easily. And I just yeah. have to keep reminding myself that we are not even at, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah. But we've had a lot of practice. We have a dog and he, yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> you got a dog. he's been, he's been, you know, really good yeah. it's been awesome. Yeah. Parenting. Yeah. Yeah. Would you, you know describe yourself? Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, no, it's weird. We have two kids, but it does seem intimidating getting a dog. Cause we started talking about it and I was like, a dog is a lot. We but we actually have two babies. Yeah. Yeah. Two babies are a lot. A too. dog. <laughs> heck no, no. Yeah. That's I think, how I feel. I don't know why. I actually think it'd be so cute to get a dog for each of our kids one day. Oh, One day, maybe. Well, that'd, like be, that. that'd be kind of fun. <laughs> That's no, a good idea. it sounded okay. I'm getting the vibe. Like, would you say you're indecisive at all? One thousand percent. Okay, because that's me. Like, right. I'm Abby's a really quick decision maker. I like, have to be. She dude, just I'm knows. Working with you. Like, she makes decisions so fast it's scary. Like her her engagement ring. It was the first ring that she tried on. She was like, "That's what I want." He's it was the done. first guy I dated. Like, I was like, like so it's quick. Done deal. And me, like, I'm over here. Like, well, I could do this option. Well, I could do this, and it's just like I can't freaking make up my mind. I so I'm the. Most I feel like you need. I feel person. like you need the balance. You yeah. do. Like, if two people are really decisive, I feel like you're gonna butt heads. Yes. If two people are indecisive, everything's just gonna fall apart. Yes. Yes, and I feel like that's even like going back to our engagement. Uh, <laughs> like he was like, "It's happening," and I'm like, yeah. "Okay." Like <laughs> it took off the stress because I could I could sit here all day and go back and forth of of why i should pick one thing or the other um so it's yeah it's like the timing and so sometimes i think god just has to come in and and decide for me someone's got to be the gas to the brake someone's got to be the brakes Mm -hmm. to the gas but i wanted to ask you like what's it like walking through life with a partner that maybe like you you've said yourself like i kind of have a crisis quarterly like yeah what's it like being the partner walking through somebody so intimately (laughs) like that um, it's, it's challenging at times for sure. Um, but I think everything that I've done up until now in my life has, has kind of prepared me for it. Oh. Um, I've been meditating every day for a little over 11 years now. And I feel like wow. that along with my newfound faith has really just helped center me and, and align me. And, um, I just feel like I, I'm a little bit calmer more than she is. And <laughs> when, when that kind of like that wave comes through. I'm just, I just kind of, I just kind of ride the wave and it, it makes it easier because of what I've done in my past up until this point. Yeah. And meditating every day. Wow. That's, that's dedication. Why did you start doing that? I think just lack of fulfillment. I, I felt like my, my life had become pretty mundane and there just wasn't a whole lot of, um, just energy or life to it. And I wanted to change it. And meditation was one of those things that I was reading in all these self-help books that was like the consistent thing that all of these people had been doing that mm. brought them a lot of joy. Um, 
so I, I, I read a book called 10% Happier by Dan Harris, and okay. it was all about meditation and how he had kind of a mental breakdown on air. He's a, he's a broadcast journalist. Okay. He started meditating, and he just basically said the whole premise of the book is meditation made him 10% happier. Um, so I kind of took that and ran with it and started meditating every day, and I just saw things open up for me after doing that. And how does one meditate? Like, what does that even look like? It's changed a lot. So, I mean, there, there are definitely different modalities you can go down, but a lot of it is just, you know, five, 10, 20 minute focus meditation. You focus on your breath, a, uh, mantra. Um, you can literally okay. sit and stay a prayer. You can sit and stare at a, um, a light. I mean, there's, there's so many different ways you can do it, but a lot of times it's me sitting down with my eyes closed, listening to meditation music for 20 minutes. Oh, okay. So it's literally like you can just do 20 minutes. It's not like you have to do a two hour long meditation. Right, right. And I have okay. been there. I mean, I, okay. I definitely went down the rabbit hole of meditation and, and I've sat through some long meditations, but yeah, 20 minutes every morning, just, you know, witnessing my thoughts come up in my brain and then coming back to whatever I'm focusing on. I will That's say really you give cool. off a very peaceful yeah. Vibe. Oh, yeah, for sure. Appreciate it. I can and see then why you guys. Me. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. I can see why you guys work together. Then, like, it just it just fits, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think we should meditate. Honestly, honestly, yeah, you're inspiring. Like, me. I'm like, now, I really need to start meditating. I feel now. like I'm a little high strung and crazy sometimes. Yeah. yeah, you can admit it. Yeah, but it's funny. Even you just saying um, what your meditation looks like, I'm realizing there might be things in my life that I that aren't technically meditation, but might give give off some of those same benefits that meditation would give off. Like if I'm stressed, I'll go and ride my one wheel. It's like an electric skateboard and I'll just <laughs> listen to EDM music for 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. might not be the most relaxing thing, but for me, EDM like, and me- meditation I, music me is so, probably pretty yeah. different. <laughs> it makes me so happy though. I don't know. Well, I mean, um, anything that brings you into the present moment is, is what I consider meditation. So, I mean, yeah. I do jujitsu every day. Ooh, and that's that cool. you can't think about anything other than surviving. Wow. So that is a form of meditation to me for wow. sure. Jiu Jitsu. That's like pretty intense, right? Very intense. Are you yep. sparring with other guys mm-hmm. and just basically trying to take each other out? Pretty much. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I, I want to try that. Come try it. That Dude. that sounds awesome. I feel like I, I've always wanted to be the the tough guy so like if there's ever a situation where someone that i love is like threatened i want to be able to take someone down that is but, the only reason i do it yeah i want to i want to be the superhero in a situation <laughs> she's like scum. yeah not that, I'm, <laughs> not that i'm like aggressive i just want to know how to like practice self-defense if i ever needed to use that so that's that's really cool that you do that yeah very sure. cool well Hannah, i know that you have a podcast that you just launched recently as well Lots as going um, on. a new book do you want to tell us more about those exciting things happening in your life? Yeah, so I started my own podcast in July. It's called Better Tomorrow with Hannah Brown. And like we kind of talked about, had this like really intense few years of my life where I grew up a lot and kind of started having these more insightful, big conversations, but also like big life changes and didn't really know how to handle all that. Yeah. And for the first time in my life, really started having bigger conversations, going to therapy and just trying to figure out, like, I've always worried, been a little bit uptight about some things. And then when that all happened, it's like, oh, how do I not feel like this all the time? Just yeah. so I listened to this podcast one day and it was th- this guy was, I think it was Oprah's podcast. Asked, he, he said to ask yourself, you know, am I better today than I was yesterday? And ask yourself Mm -hmm. that every day. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm doing this. And I had a post-it card and I put it in this hallway mirror that I walked by and I would would see it every day and ask myself like that question and it would make me take an account of what was happening that that day. And did I really up level in some way? Did I feel more inspired and encouraged? Mm. And some days it was yes, which was awesome, but there would be some days that it was no. And by taking that account, it really allowed me to not have another day that was a followed up with another no. Um, Because I took that small, you know, few seconds, minute or so to just like assess what Mm -hmm. could be a little better, what could have been a better decision that I can make going into the following day. So that's where I came up with the idea of the podcast is having conversations with people who what decisions, what life changes did they go through that got them to this better tomorrow? Mm, really and cool. um, it's been really, really awesome to be able to have a, 
a platform to have longer form conversation and really get to yeah. connect with not only my guests but with um my community yeah in, in a different way because i mean there's so much noise out there there's so much um entertainment or things that we can do that just kind of numb us and so what is it that i can really give a value to those people who are taking the time to you know spend 30 minutes an hour with me and like yeah can can i make sure that i'm being really responsible for that time and making sure they feel better than they did when they press play yeah. so that's like the whole goal of the the podcast is to just make people feel a little bit better than they did yesterday and then um with that i've been working on a book for Whoa. a while now um I've, I've written a book that was nonfiction about my life. I call it like my quarter life memoir. Um, and that was amazing. And that was in 20, 2021, That's 2022. That's a really big undertaking to it write was a book. It was a lot. Book. That was really hard. <laughs> um, and this is now fiction, which was, it's oh. always been my favorite. I grew up like being an avid reader and loved romance. So this is a rom-com it's called mistakes we've never made and i'm really really excited for people to read it because i have done my market research i can say <laughs> and i feel like it's it's everything that makes up um an epic summer read and i you know i'm not a full-time writer so i definitely found a great team that helped support me and made sure that all the thoughts and my ideas and everything that i wanted from these characters was um, made possible and yeah. on the page um, but it was such a collaborative experience and it was it was so fun to have it was actually just a group of women that um, we all worked together to make sure that this is like everything you want in your next summer read on the beach it follows Emma who's kind of a little bit type a a little uptight and she is trying to help her friend Sybil who was a runaway bride not make the the mistake of her life and she has to um find the help of her once enemy Finn who broke her heart and they had a lot of different myth almost in their relationships and um, a relationship in in their past and then they have to come together to kind of find Sybil and along the way might fall yeah. in love so wow it's, I can't wait to fun. read it. Yeah, Abby's yeah. a big like bookworm, so she. Yeah. I feel like Abby will definitely be reading that book on the beach. No, it's it's <laughs> really. I'm I'm very proud of it. A lot of hard work went into it, I'm and I'm sure. um, think Emily Henry type book, cool. like um, people we meet on vacation type uh -huh. vibe. So it's awesome. It'll be out May. May 2024. I've, I've got to ask. There's been some books. Abby's read some rom-com books where there's like a sex scene, like every page. Is what that this? Is that this book? Or what yeah. The what you? you know, there was one book you were like, Matt. This one is like I cannot read this around my mom. Like no. it was. Okay. It was insane. So the, it, there's definitely some steamy okay. part <laughs> for sure, but it's a gradual like thing. It's not. Okay. I know what you're tasteful. talking about. It's tasteful. Okay. And I think it shows every part of. A relationship and falling in love. I I'll saw your that. cover art yes. you shared okay. recently. It's like such a cute book to put on the shelf too. It's very beautiful. I know. For your I, library. It was, it was important for me for it to be a really pretty cover that caught people's eye and um, it's like a beautiful watercolor yeah. kind of Grand Canyon. Maybe there might be something on the road trip along the way that <laughs> kind of was important a uh, place in the plot of, of the story. Um, so yeah, it looks really good, and it's it's so, definitely got the pretty pinks and yeah. um, watercolor look. But yeah, it looks. Adam, great. have you read the book? Not yeah. yet. I'm gonna buy it on the shelves like everybody else. Okay. Wait. Do you okay. have a launch date? <laughs> yes, it's um, May seventh. Okay, May 7th? that's super yep, 2024. exciting. So, but wow. you can pre-order now. Nice. Um, you can get it wherever books are sold. Um, pre-orders are great. So that would be really awesome for people to support. Wow. And I'm so confident in the product that I'm like, yeah. you're going to love it. Is yeah. it is it finished at this point? Are you like wrapping things it's up? It's finished, yes. Wow. We're actually working on book two. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. So started that. That will be, we have we have a while for that before that one comes out. But yeah, it all the editing is, it's getting crisp. It's all, it's, wow. it's there. Cool. Yeah. Congratulations. That's super Thank exciting. Thank you. Hannah Brown, the podcaster, author, special force, 
dancer. Yeah. Are you yes. going to be joining the special forces now that you like, you know, won the TV show? I, I no. <laughs> <laughs> I respect the heck out of them. I really admire what what people do to serve our country, but yeah. uh, I don't know if I can do that again. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, this is where we say peace out, dudes, to end out our <laughs> okay. episode. Got it. Okay. Three, two, one. Peace, peace out, out, dudes. dudes.